Hi, in this slide, uh, I want to detail a little bit more of the elements of a corporate culture. Uh, you know, the expression, fish don't know they're in water. Well, we don't know we're in corporate culture water. It's sort of stuff all around. It's, uh, it's a lot of unseen, just intuitive kinds of, of, of things. Um, but to, to make it more concrete, uh, first of all, there are a lot of basic assumptions. Um, earlier in the slide series, I talked about a uh, life cycle of an industry and what are life cycle appropriate strategies and how management tends to have grown up in an industry and therefore what they learned made sense when they may learned it, but, but may maybe the life cycles change a lot and their mental models haven't. So we tend to lag what's really going on, generals fight the last war kind of thing. The, if you look at the service profit chain and all the assumptions that are built into it, everybody says, well, you know, that, that makes sense, that customer retention economics is the final way to do well, but that doesn't mean they know who the number one niche are and the 555 customers in that niche and so forth, or the big eight of service excellence, whatever. Um, an assumption might be that if we wanted to have a high performance culture, we'd put everybody on a peer-based team to provide uh, collective discipline and collective motivation and collective uh, collaboration, particularly when we're on two teams. One team might be departmental, the other team might be a cross-department process team. Um, a basic assumption would be that if ultimately we're in the service value, innovation, creation, selling, delivery, installation business, if you think about service value chain solutions, then the quality, aptitude, and attitude of our people is very important. So we need to hire maybe fewer, better people, pay more, expect more, and we need to weed uh, bad apples before they spoil the whole bunch very quickly. So hire slowly, weed quickly. Uh, what are values, shared values we have? Uh, I've delineated a number of them in this particular slide clip series that are are generic. In other words, everybody needs to grow and self-actualize because that's what makes humans happy and wants them, and gets them engaged and makes them want to own uh, what's going on and, and contribute their hobby energy and their home economic savvy. Um, but to be a learning organization means we have to be making smart, good mistakes and failing forward. Nothing do worth doing that's new and cool is can be done right the first time. Uh, we need to respect everybody, but particularly give stakeholders premium economics. We're going to have excellence and service value, do it right the first time, but it's very focused to a niche so that it's high value and low cost. Uh, transparency, so that numbers are everywhere, which allows us to maximize the privileges, premium economics and self-actualization, but it also maximizes the accountability that gives and the gets, the privileges and responsibilities. What are our beliefs? I mean, I know plenty of, of distribution companies where they say, well, we have reps and they're pretty much, you know, got their territories, they're on commission, and they kind of get to do whatever they want to do the way they want to do it. And if they're good or they're bad, you know, as long as they're on commission, we kind of don't care. And I guess that's good enough as opposed to, no, we need everybody striving to become a 10, a black belt, you know, first, second, third degree sales rep. We need to have total teams, not just independent solo Suzuki cowboys going out and selling service value chain solutions to bigger, better, more, most progressive customers in a given niche who are migrating towards being service chain buyers. Um, and if we have, uh, you know, the measurements of the hexagon and we're expecting certain, you know, be a black belt 10th de you know, degree behavior and be a, a team player along your, your service process, you know, team and so forth, we'll get certain actions and they all interact. What's going to come out of this are stories. We're going to say, oh my gosh, let me tell you about the time Joe Blow, the hero of the story, did something to make something happen. And we're going to commemorate it with a little trophy or a prize or something. So we start to accumulate symbols. These are called artifacts of a culture. And for more, if you go to Google and then click on images and then type in corporate culture, you'll see plenty of uh, slide graphics that provide different kinds of, of models sort of mixing these, these kinds of terms uh, uh, together. But that's, a, that's sort of a little primer or a, a beginning uh, uh, lesson on, on culture management. Uh, we'll get into this more in the next section. Thank you.